kind of think that I understand the idea of going after a star wing like Paul George, especially if you're able to just get him with cap space. And then the thing about that is you sign Paul George. There's a world where you could sign Paul George trade for like Alex trade two first round picks for like Alex Caruso and then run back the key parts of this roster, Lowry, Batum, Ubre, let Paul Reed walk, obviously, and then try to find some guys on the margins. Hope Ricky Council gets better. Let Tobias walk. And you just hope that, uh, you know, it's enough talent to get you by in the regular season. But Paul George is 34 years old. He just turned 34. And he's probably going to get him a max contract. And he's had a ton of surgeries. And he's not always been the most available guy in the regular season and in the playoffs. There's a downside to it, for sure. Yeah, there is. I'm, I'm conflicted on it because... Or like a couple months ago, like earlier in the regular season, I was thinking like the new model in the NBA is the Nuggets model. Get two stars and then get a bunch of role players who are stars in their role, as you said. But I just I feel like I don't know. You can't copy thought, everyone else's model is the yeah, thing. You, you have to kind of do like, your own thing. I think I like you said, it's that you can copy because the Nuggets have the perfect like you're not gonna get I mean you could, but you're not gonna get Aaron Gordon or you know Michael Porter Jr. Um they're also, those, those, those versions this time. Yeah, like regardless of whether Jokic or Embiid, like Jokic is better than Embiid in the playoffs, he also doesn't ever miss time. Like he plays every playoffs. Mm -hmm. He sits like the most he's sitting is like five games, ten games in a season. Yeah, so, he's, like, a tri he's a triad. <laughs> but that's also part of the reason why you can have the luxury of building that kind of team. Because yeah. the Sixers might go the other way and say, look, we need to have more depth because it only matters if Joel's healthy. But there, as we saw this year, there's value in having a Maxi Paul George mm -hmm. to those two star level guys with the talent in the NBA nowadays. If those two are able to stay healthy and play during the regular season, and you just find guys on the fringes, then, hey, maybe we can kind of survive Joel missing 20, 30 games a year and mm -hmm. it won't affect our seating, which is, as we learned this year, really important. Like, they would have avoided the play-in. They would have, you know, like I said, like they would have eventually had to beat the Knicks, but like it would have been nice to have a layup series in the first round. Yeah. Um, just to, by the way about the Jokic, he's gonna win his he's gonna win a second straight title this year. Good for him. We'll see you in the gold medal game in July. All right. So let's go. When we when when Jokic when Embiid sure beats, when Embiid beats him in the gold medal game and Jokic yep. is coming off back to back titles, I don't care. I'm pushing yep. that propaganda. Exactly. Jokic never dropped a triple double in an elimination game in MSG. Okay, so whatever. But regardless, the Paul George thing, I just wish he was like three years younger. Um, I know. Because I'm just kind of, for so long, I looked at the Sixers window as Joel. Yes. So like two years ago, I wouldn't care if Paul George was 34. I'd be like, sure. Joel's going to be 31 next year. Like we have two to three years regardless. Like I don't care. But now Maxi completely changes that where even like when Joel's 34 and he's, gonna, and he's starting to decline, Maxi will be hitting his peak. So like- yeah. That we're still going to be contenders at that time, hopefully. And then if you have a washed Paul George making forty million a year, that, that messes that up. So like the window to me has completely but, changed. But Daryl could look at that positively too and say, "Look, we get this guy for free, and we have this massive expiring contract in three years." I know it sounds a lot like the Tobias yeah. stuff, yeah. But the difference is that Paul George is a name, and Paul mm -hmm. George has had an amazing career. And I kind of like, I think that Paul George it will age way better than a player like Tobias just because he's massive and he shoots threes and he's got just good. He's got, he's a better athlete. So, think, like, even yeah. declining athleticism is he's still yeah. more athletic than Tobias. Yeah. I think Wash Paul George will still be a solid role player. Yeah. The issue is, the issue is you'll be paying him 45 million a year. Sure. Sure. But, but like, um, two years from now, if they have, let's say they, let's just hypothetically say they trade no picks. They, they use their pick this year, and then two years from now, they're at the draft in 2026, and they can trade 2026, 2029, the Clippers pick, this pick, that pick. They have like six first-round picks. You attach that to that, and then you can you can pivot and rework your, your shit if it doesn't work out with Paul George. So, like, I don't really think it's, like, impossible to move the Paul mm -hmm. George contract as long as you hold on to those picks because – one of the benefits of what the Sixers have done is like they haven't gone all in like the Suns did and like yeah. the like the Bucks did, where like they don't really the Bucks more have a little bit more flexibility and moves to make, but like the Suns have no moves to make. The Sixers mm -hmm. can kind of maintain this shit while also putting together a core that's good enough to win. And 
always having the maxi part in mind because I've said before, like, I think if anything, I don't want to put a ceiling on him because yeah, like Joel saying in the press conference last night, like he's going to be, a, he's like an all NBA player. Like we have a top, a guy who could be a t in two years could be a top 10 player in the NBA. And you need to keep that in mind while also trying to maximize this as much as possible. And that's why I kind of think the cap space plan is actually ending up being the best move possible, which a year ago I was like, it makes no fucking sense. But now how this year has unfolded, I'm like, it actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And the, the Harden opt-in really in the trade really was such a lifeline to them Yeah, because they would have had zero, like they still have the cap space. They have zero assets to trade. Yep. And and like you said, the Drew Holiday element of it, the fact yeah, that the Clippers God. didn't get Drew I'll Holiday. I'll be honest. Like I won't, oh, yeah. I was thinking, when I said that, I was talking because I think if we made that tr the, the Harden trade a month, like a month earlier, I think we would have yeah. flipped those assets for Drew. Oh, yeah. It would have yeah. been a disaster. No, that would have been um, hard. I mean, he would. he's not what this team needs. Yeah. And even there was the, I think, Bond Temp said today that the Sixers were planning on targeting, which just would have been awful. It's not encouraging. I but, know. Um, well, the, the, other, the other problem is that there aren't a ton of good role players in this free agency class. It's like, mm. the, obviously we just like drew drew at this point is a role player. Like, let's be like, he's yeah, going to get paid yeah. like a star, but he's a role player. Like he's, mm. that's what he is for Boston. He's the, uh, the LeBron James of Andre Roberson's as Sam says. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, uh, the, the thing about this class is like the best role player possible is Contavious Caldwell Pope. And you can throw a bag at KCP, and he would be a great fit with Maxi in the backcourt. Mm -hmm. But it's not like the Bruce Brown thing a year ago, where they can't match it, the deal like they could with like that. You'd be tempting Denver. You could be like, "Here's twenty five million dollars a year, Contavious Caldwell Pope." Let's say you miss out on Paul George, and you're like, mm -hmm. "Here's twenty five mil to KCP for like three years or whatever." But there's also a chance that Denver says. You know, we'll, we're willing to pay that just to keep this core together for the remaining years of yeah. Jokic's prime. And uh, that, I mean, there's also a chance that they just cheap out and they say, fuck it, we're already paying three max contracts and Aaron Gordon. So we can figure out the KCP spot. Maybe Peyton Watson goes into that. Yeah. Um, but I, I honestly think that, like, if I, let's just rank it right now. Let's rank our preferred outcomes for guys that they could trade for, guys that they could get in free agency because right now, I I still think I mean obviously pie in the sky. LeBron James would be number one if he. I'm telling you, LeBron, you want to you want back to back NBA cups, man. Come on, come to Philly. Darrell's gonna play in the Olympics. He's gonna come to training camp in shape and with a rhythm. Oof, NBA cup next year, man. Maxi, he has a good relationship with Maxi. They're yes. both clutch. LeBron, like. LeBron, you can live in New York, commute to Philly. I've been saying this. Yes, JJ, you do your pod with JJ. JJ can tell you all about it. Know. Yeah. Perfect. You, can, you know, you can live, like, honestly, Josh Harris can hook you up with his airplane, with his uh, helicopter. There you go. Well, well maybe not helicopter, you, considering the history of the all-time. Uh, okay. Players. Yeah. Let's start, let's stick with the helicopter. But, um, yeah, you don't even have to step foot in the city of Philadelphia aside from when you uh, yeah. go to the games. Exactly. You yeah. don't even have to, like, don't even think of think about like you're playing for New York. You're playing for the Knicks. You yeah. just have to wear a Sixers jersey. Exactly. Fine. You honestly, you can come to. You can show up for 50 games a year, and then the yeah, playoffs. You, you know what? You don't even have to play the home games, man. Just play like 10 home games. Like it's fine. If we you do play in Brooklyn in twice a year. We play in in the Garden yeah. twice a year. Yeah. You'll get to be. We play in L.A. once a, or twice a year with the Clippers and the Lakers. Like you can take a week off and go to L.A. Sometimes when Joel's yeah. playing. Miami. Fun. You will be in Miami, Miami twice a year. Get, go get your HGH. There you, you know? go. We all right. So LeBron's number one, obviously. I, I obviously LeBron's think number one. he I, I still think it's more likely the Lakers make a trade where they trade for like Donovan Mitchell or Trey Young or something, and he just goes back, especially because yeah. they fired Don Darvin Ham. Mm -hmm. I feel like if they had kept Darvin Ham, I might have been like, and I think the idea is that if the Clippers lose tonight. Ty Lue's contract expires. LeBron and Ty Lue have a relationship mm -hmm. and he doesn't want to leave LA probably, even though the Lakers coaching job is like the worst coaching job to have in the NBA, in my opinion. Like yeah. they made the conference finals and won the in-season tournament this year and lost to the team that won the title last year in a really competitive series, even if it only went five games and he gets fired after two years. Yeah, that's crazy. I don't Why? Yeah. Why would Ty Lue want that? Like Ty Lue could probably, probably take a year off. Pick his, yeah. 
I hope they hire JJ Redick. That would be hilarious. Let's go. Let's go. LeBron um, and JJ doing their pods together. That's JJ's while head they're coach. while they're coaching and playing. Um. Okay, so LeBron's number one. Paul George in free agency, I think, is number two for me. You're not gonna like this. For number two is for me, Jimmy Butler. I'm sorry. So trade for Jimmy Butler, which, by the way, I've been saying since February that. Mm. Miami does not want to extend him because he's old and he always, this is the time that he re-ups two years out. He gets mm -hmm. two extra years and the last two years of his deal, he would be 37 and 38 years old. So I think that the team is concerned about his, I mean, he has the same kind of knee stuff that Joel has. Like we've discussed meniscus yeah. stuff. He sits out a lot. He just got injured again. I think that they're kind of looking to more align on the Bam Adebayo timeline. And I've been thinking if they trade Jimmy Butler, they probably send Jimmy Butler to a third team. The Cavs send Donovan Mitchell to them. And then the whoever sends picks and players to the Cavs, or maybe if it's a fourth team involved or whatever. But what do you think it would cost to get Jimmy Butler? And also, more importantly to me, we know Daryl's been chasing him his whole career. There are non-Sixers fans that don't really understand this, that Daryl's yeah. been chasing Jimmy his whole career because he got hired here a year mm -hmm. after Jimmy left, and he tried yeah. to get him when he was in Houston. But what do you think the, pr the appropriate price would be? And more importantly to me, do you think Jimmy would ever come back? Because do we know? I, I think it was the last front office that fucked him over. But yeah. do we know if there was ownership people that he might not like and would never want to play for us again? It's possible. I mean, yeah. Ben over Jimmy, even though it probably was a front office decision, that yeah. also was an ownership decision. Like ownership wouldn't have let them um, have chosen Jimmy over Ben. Yeah. Like um, at that time, Ben ownership valued Ben over Embiid. Which yeah, like people, which non Sixers fans probably don't know, but they yes. did. Um, yeah, I don't even know what the price. I have no feel on NBA trade values now because I feel like some they'll be like KD might get traded for like a for one first round pick this all season, and then like Trey Young will go for like seven first round picks and three good players, like that. and or Trey Young could go for one first round pick. I have no clue, but like I would give up. The market has definitely been lower since the KD and Gobert trades and Mitchell yeah. trade. Since I, that I 2022 have, offseason, really. Yeah, the trade market's in a weird place right now. I feel like I can't – I don't even know what the prices are anymore. But I, I would probably give up the Clippers pick for him. I would give up – I would give up our picks for him, which is really all we have, really. We have no so, like, contract. you would give up, like, three first-round picks and then just take Jimmy yeah, into the piece. Yeah, and then he could have – he Paul Reed's a great fit for heat, heat culture. So, you know. <laughs> Guarantees Paul's contract, send him down there. He turns yeah. into uh, uh actually yeah, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. He turned into Siakam down. The yeah, I know. No. There you go. no, thank you. No, thank you. Um I think that it would I, I think it would probably look more like them, like I said, them getting a star, whether it's Trey Young, Donovan Mitchell, someone like that, that fits more with Bam's timeline because that's kind of what they've sent out into the media mm -hmm. is that they want someone that's closer closely aligned to to Bam as opposed to Jimmy. Um and I think it's a 50-50 chance Jimmy gets traded this offseason because I don't think that Jimmy will take – I think he'll be disrespected by the fact that they don't want to extend him. I feel like it's – we've seen this movie before. Like Sixers mm -hmm. didn't want to – you know, they might have balked on paying him after originally offering him it. The Timberwolves, obviously, the Bulls, all these teams that didn't pay him, he was like very disrespected. But he's also gone on record saying he wants to play his whole career for the Heat. So maybe he's changed his mind. I don't know. Yeah, I don't well, – I think – I think he would take it very personally if they try to lowball him. He'd ask out. Yeah. But also, so, like, I don't know. I don't know how much he really cares anymore. But like that team with him, clearly, they're done as like winning, winning. In yeah. I mean, I think that they know that it's probably time to either put Jimmy into a different role, or it's time to acquire a third star like Donovan Mitchell to yeah, fit. Unless, yeah. Unless they somehow could turn that Hero Hawkins package into Donovan Mitchell, and they have Donovan Mitchell, Jimmy, Bam. But like. Then um, that's yeah, that's that. Would maybe they would do that. The yeah. heat, the heat, of course, get away with everything. So maybe that'll happen. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, and then so my th so that that that's my 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 current. I'm not. I guess Jimmy would be third technically. Um, fourth for me would be just get normal role players. Like go get Alex Caruso. Uh, trade 
Paul Reed plus the 16th pick in this draft and a future first protected for Alex Caruso. Go sign KCP and free agency. Go maybe even take flyers on guys like, you know, more bench wingy type guys like Caleb Martin or Najee Marshall or whatever. Um, And that's kind of all I would think 